I'm Hans Suchko, I'm teaching composition at Harvard University, and I've known Jacopo Baboniske Lingi for more than 25 years now. We met in 94 at IRCAM when we were both studying in the year long courses. Already back then, it was really clear that he is interested in exchange, in discussion, in diving deep into certain subjects. And very soon after we first met together with the French composer Brice Posé, we initiated our cooking circle. So every week we met, or almost every week, we met in one of our apartments, would cook together, and then listen to music, um, discuss painting, sculpture, the arts in general, philosophy. So it was this kind of ongoing renewal of diving deep into a certain subject. I later had the chance to co-teach with him, so we were colleagues at the conservatory in Montbéliard. I was there for three years, and I saw him setting up this ensemble for interactive music. In our world, where we try to put instrumentalists, vocalists together with technology, unfortunately, very often, concerts are produced in not so ideal conditions. Musicians learn the pieces mainly as instrumental scores because they have no idea of how this electronic sound world will actually manifest. And very late in the process, someone comes in with the technology and then we expect from the musician to integrate that into their interpretation. That is not ideal. So the, one of the goals of the ensemble in Montbéliard was to extend that rehearsal process with the technology over sometimes weeks, sometimes months, to learn a work very deeply. And not only for the composer and for the instrumentalists or vocalists, but also for those who run the electronics, the sound technicians, the musical assistants. So to bring everybody who is involved in the interpretation of the work together and rehearse together. Um, in an parallel activity, Jacopo tried to bring together people, composers, artists, um, who are interested in exchange, and that led to this Prisma group. It's an activity which now lasts for over 20 years, and once a year we get together and we discuss what we have been doing, and we discuss what our questions are. Very often the artistic and the academic exchange in our world happens through writing papers, attending conferences, giving short demonstrations. But those are not necessarily always the best outlets to discuss a problem set, something we are not sure of, something we would like to have input on. And Jacopo wanted to form or to give the framework of a group where people can take as much time as they need. If I have a subject I need to talk about for three hours to get really into all the details, then I can do that in that group. And very often it's not only to present shiny work, but to come in with questions, to saying, I want to solve this, I have this idea in mind, and I'm sure in this room there are other like-minded people who have already worked on this, and there might be a solution if we put our brains together. So these two activities show how long and how intense we have been working together and have witnessed Jacopo teaching many times. So he's really a fine teacher with an extremely open heart and very generous, very generous in providing his students not only with the crafts of composition, not only with a very detailed and deep knowledge of the musical history, but also going into questions of production. How do you actually put your work not only on paper, but how do you bring it into the world? And that includes um, how to work with ensembles, how to write um, financial applications, how to work with concert organizers, etc., etc. So he has this very broad view, not only from the music making side, but also from the production side. So Jacopo has been one of my closest collaborators over all those years. And there is, in closing, just one more thing I would like to highlight, uh, and these are his writings. So I saw through years of presentations of him thinking about certain aspects, how that then finally manifested in two books. The first one is La Musique Hyper Systémique. So this is really kind of um, a presentation, a condensed presentation of his thoughts 
and how he tries to put kind of a framework, a mental framework, a philosophical framework around the process of art making. And the second book, Si Modèle d'Analyse Hermeneutique, that's a shorter read. Um, again, both works, both books show very different ways of looking at the um, creative process and I would highly recommend them for you. Um, dive into them and if there are things which are not clear, and that was my case many times, I would just write him an email and saying, hey, I don't get this aspect of your thinking. He's very interested in discussion. He's very open-minded and very responsive to going deeper, understanding more and keep discovering. So if you get the chance to work with Jacopo and if you get the chance to um, encounter his world and his teaching, it will be enriching for you, but also for him. I wish you good luck with it.